Hi everybody, welcome to Sonia IS. Yes. Welcome to topic 4.1 of the worksheet discussion. We are discussing the environment prelims crash course 2023. So far, we've covered a lot of the important lectures in the prelims crash course of environment. So if you want to join it, please join it at the earliest so that you don't miss out on these important lectures. Right? So this is topic or this is the day 4.1. In this, we actually had two lectures. One was 4.1 again related to species conservation. And we also had 4.2 which basically focused more on birds and different aquatic ecosystems. Confusing terms like sea grasses, sea weeds, sea cucumbers, etc. Right. So, I will have two worksheets here. One for day 4.1 which is right now. In this, you should read chapter 7 Indian Biodiversity Landscape. You should also read about plant diversity of India, protected area networks, chapter 11. Then one should also just quickly glance through chapter 12, national parks, tiger reserves, etc. Then chapter 13, major wildlife sanctuaries of India, right? And then chapter 16, which is conservation efforts. So yes, there are a lot of chapters which are to be done, which should be complemented with your lectures, both 4.1 and 4.2, right? Because these species, a lot of species, static and the ones in news are very important for you. Alright, so now we begin. This is question number one. This is one of the most expected questions for, for the exam. The cheetah reintroduction project. So number one, you have Asiatic cheetah in this question. So please read it very carefully. It is asking you which of the following statements is correct. Okay, so statement number one, Asiatic cheetah is now found only in Iran. Absolutely true. Okay. And by the way, in this question, please check whether they're asking you Asiatic cheetah or whether they're asking you African cheetah. All right. So yes, Asiatic cheetah only found in Iran. It was extinct from India way back in the 1950s, around 1952. It was extinct from India. Okay. And second, Asiatic cheetah is critically endangered. Absolutely. Yes. In the IUCN list. Yes. And of course, not found in India. Then in under Project Cheetah, they will be introduced to Kuno National Park in Madhya Pradesh. See, half statement here is true that Kuno National Park in Madhya Pradesh. But we are not reintroducing Asiatic Cheetah. We are basically be going to introduce African Cheetahs, right? One of the logic here is that African Cheetah are roughly 7,000 in number. Whereas the Asiatic Cheetah barely 50 or 100 in number, very less, localized only in Iran. So bringing them back, taking all of that conservation efforts is difficult. So which is why we've gone from for African cheetah. And African cheetah is not critically endangered. Of course, it, this they are, you have 7,000 of them. All right. So one and two is correct. Statement three, very fine detail that it is not the Asiatic cheetah, but the African cheetah, which will be reintroduced. Answer is A, 1 and 2 only. Okay. So, yes, we have seen this in a lot of detail in the lecture. Kuno National Park, Madhya Pradesh. Okay. We have also seen why is there a threat because of existing leopard population. I also talked to you about Asiatic lions in this. Right. I hope you remember that part. Okay. So, yes, you are getting a lot of cheetah from Namibia and from South Africa. Right. The Asiatic cheetahs are larger in uh, shape and size okay that's one difference and of course the conservation status is also different and this part kuno national park in madhya pradesh that is also different also i expect you to know why is this particular site chosen i gave you an explanation so this is a very important topic for this year's current affairs all right now let's move to the next one now we have to see now this is also an important question i'll i also tell you the context so you have thallophytes, angiosperms, bryophytes, pteridophytes, and gymnosperms. Now, you can classify this particular plants into two parts. One is cryptogams and second is phanerogams, right? Now, why is this important? Because India has recently opened up its first cryptogamic garden, right? The first cryptogamic garden has been opened up by India, which makes this question very important. Cryptogams are thallophytes, bryophytes, and pteridophytes. Apart from this, what are cryptogams? See, the name crypto means something which is cryptic, hidden. So, their reproductive organs are hidden. Cryptogams, very easy. Phanerogams, the reproductive organs are 
visible. That's one point of difference. The second is that cryptograms reproduce through spores. And phanerograms, they are basically reproducing, right? They are reproducing through the seeds. That is one point of difference here. Okay. Apart from this, what is the basic difference? Of course, you know this. Now, now some of you might not be able to re remember thallophyte, bryophyte and pteridophytes. Let us make this very easy. Okay. You just write down algae here. Okay. You can write down mosses here and you can write down ferns here. If you have seen the lectures, I have shown you images of all of them. Algae, there is going to be no differentiation, etc. So the least differentiated algae is thallophytes. Mosses have still more differentiation. They will be bryophytes. They can be mosses. They can be liverworts. I hope you remember my lecture. We have done this in a lot of detail. And then what is pteridophytes? Ferns. Now these are well differentiated into the different aspects. Like for example, there will be root. There will be leaves, stems, etc. Right? So this actually question makes a lot of sense when you read the current affairs related to it. Of course, the part which we've discussed now. Now let us go to the question. Okay. So in this case, when you think of thallophytes, the plant body is not well differentiated. Of course, I would know that. All right. Then when I go with bryophyte, uh, sorry, uh, the angiosperms. Okay. Angiosperms, genosperms, all that differences we've already taken into account. Right. So here the seeds are present in the fruit. Okay. So that is the basic definition. So 2E. Okay. If I only knew one and two, I can get the answer. But let's see other ones. Bryophytes. And see for bryophytes, pteridophytes, just remember the examples. All right. So for bryophytes, then it is going to be vascular tissues are absent. Plant body is well differentiated. Okay. So that would be there. And then pteridophytes, of course, vascular tissues are present. Right. And then the last one is your gymnosperms, right? So they bear naked seeds, right? So answer for two is D. A lot of the people don't do this portion at all or basically cram it. We've done it very comprehensively. So those of you who still are not very sure may can see this in the comprehensive lectures of the crash course. All right. Then this is a very straightforward question. We are talking of the Shola grasslands, right? Or basically the grasslands in the Shola forests. So... Uh, also, please beg your pardon. This is the Nilgiri forests. Yeah. So in this, basically the answer is going to be A, the Shola forests. Okay. So Nilgiri region is very important from uh, UPSC's perspective. You know the basic region of Western Ghats. Okay. And basically this part. So yes, you will have a lot of tropical rainforests in the region. Okay. So one that is going to be there. Apart from this, uh, this region specifically you will have nai right say anamalai hills Pala, uh, palani hills in this re region you have a lot of species diversity as well right so roughly the tropical rainforests etc will be found in this region that is uh, basically the extensive a, a lot of grasslands also so the grasslands which grow here are going to be this particular region of shola forests all right fine then we go to sundarbans in Sundarbans, we have four statement question. It is asking you which is incorrect. So statement number one, world's largest mangrove forests. So this is actually true. Okay. So this is absolutely correct. So you cannot have this and this as the answer. Then designated as UNESCO's World Heritage Site in 1987. This is very factual. Okay. But this is also true. Third, globally threatened wildlife species like estuarine crocodiles are found here so yes that is definitely true these are found okay and then son sonertia and avicennia are trees mainly found here now if you have seen my lecture we have discussed about avicennia marina basically and i've told that to you in case of mangroves right that this was the first one to be properly genome sequence which was done right if you knew this and if you can connect this with mangroves of course you could have gotten the answer that this would also have been wrong. This is correct. Right. These are the species of mangroves. So yes, the answer is none of the above. None is incorrect. All the statements are properly correct in this question. All right. And with this also, you should revise the mangrove adaptations that we've done in a lot of detail. Now, then again, one aspect of current affairs is BOMA capturing technique. So it involves 
the luring of animals into an enclosure by chasing them through funnel like fencing okay number one second used for the first time in karna tiger reserve madhya pradesh for capturing and translocating of tiger to satkosia so luring of animals into an enclosure in a funnel like fencing absolutely correct okay so this technique is actually popular in africa okay wherein uh, a luring of animals is happening in these enclosure like structures and these are funnel like fencing which is done right you can see the image you have uh, these basic underground power supply cable or transmission lines of course this protects the animals right from human interventions also from going growing out and from other illegal activities as well right so this is there now why is this technique preferred like right so of course it does not require chemical immobilization right of the animal so this is less invasive in in that aspect fine so second statement it has been used for the first time now this part is wrong it is used for the first time in keolia deo national park okay and basically uh for, 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 that was done for capturing the spotted deer okay that was basically done so keolia deo national park you should remember okay second statement is wrong so for question number 5 the answer is going to be one only all right then dugong again an important question for us right so again it is asking you which of the following is incorrect okay so it is first of all dugong is also known as sea cow we have discussed dugong in a lot of detail okay now here it is the only existing species of herbivorous uh, mammal that lives exclusively in the sea yes true absolutely true right classified as vulnerable i already we have discussed all of this the depletion will directly impact the food chain of course also remember my lecture we discussed that in uh, india's dugong conservation reserve is going to be set up in tamil nadu i hope you remember that aspect of current affairs right and we have signed a non legally binding uh, a particular mou yeah that is also correct on the conservation of dugong so again in this question all the statements are correct right so the correct answer is d none is incorrect all right then exotic and invasive species are closely related in this context so invasive species harms the natural balance of an ecosystem true or false true invasive species starve other species by crowding out effect what is crowding out effect you already heard that in economy so yes you have limited resources okay so there is one is native population when one is non native or exotic fine so these non native population are very ecologically efficient right they are very productive now because of this very productive nature they are able to prey on a lot of issues and a lot of resources which leaves very less resources for native population ultimately leading to out competing them and known as crowding out effect all right then you have third statement once non native species have been introduced into a lake they are almost impossible to get rid of absolutely correct by the way as a small homework and you should write in the comments we have discussed almost 7 to 8 invasive species right so you should write down the names and then think whatever did i tell like what was the distribution right what was the speciality so what was it leading to you should definitely recall this after this question fine so the answer is d 1 2 and 3 okay then desert national park again we've discussed so much about this in the class also great indian bustard so in this question sand dunes comprise more than half of the park now that is actually wrong it's barely around 20% so definitely not more than 50% that is too much second it is the natural habitats of great indian bustard absolutely yes right we also saw that this was the state bird of rajasthan and a lot of conservation efforts because this is critically endangered a lot of conservation efforts by the state governments of rajasthan and the state governments of gujarat were happening in this case okay so this is also true one of the natural habitats for great indian bustard and third it is the first national park in india to be equipped with satellite phones now this in this they're talking about kazi ranga national park in assam okay so to prevent the illegal poaching illegal hunting activities it has equipped with satellite phones 
ऑफ कोर्स काजीरंगा इज फेमस फॉर वन हॉर्न राइनोस ऑल दो वन हॉर्न राइनोस इज नॉट एंडेमिक टू दिस रीजन राइट वी डिस्कस्ड ऑल दीज एस्पेक्ट राइट सो थर्ड स्टेटमेंट इज रॉन्ग सो यू गेट योर आंसर इज ओनली टू ऑल राइट फॉर मोर मोर डिटेल्स यू कैन डेफिनेटली रेफर द लेक्चर वी हुड कवर दिस विद लॉट ऑफ डिटेल फाइन now match the following these kind of questions are always asked now this question is very important why because bhindavas was in news why because this was recently added as a wetland site kuno wildlife sanctuary has been in in the news not only for one year but two or three years ramgarh vishdari wildlife sanctuary again in news why because this was basically added as one of the recent tiger reserves okay so very important and then you have koringa wildlife sanctuary okay so koringa wildlife sanctuary andhra pradesh yes ramgarh vishdari wildlife sanctuary rajasthan yes now your homework should be you should see out the other tiger reserves of rajasthan that would be helpful then kuno wildlife sanctuary so kuno wildlife sanctuary definitely not gujarat it is going to be madhya pradesh so three is wrong and d bindwas wildlife sanctuary so yes this is a wetland and this is a wetland designated in haryana so your answer is c only three pairs all right then question number 10 project hangul being implemented in jammu and kashmir okay true so this is also known as the kashmir stag okay hangul it is critically endangered and it is the part of species recovery program of ministry of environment and forest climate change right one is right this was launched in collaboration with iucn and wwf yes both the bodies are correct okay iucn and wwf you should read more about these bodies right now hemis national park was declared under this project no it was actually dachigam national park by the way hemis national park is important in the sense it's the biggest national park of india area wise right so yes for this question of course the hemis is not correct the answer is dachigam which makes statement number 3 wrong okay if you eliminate 3 you could have gotten your answer now you might wonder so do we need to remember the names of all these national parks etc no there are species which are localized or endemic to a region so let's say if i talk of asiatic lion let's say if i talk about hangul or the kashmir stag yes for these you would no need to know right i have covered all the list of endemic species etc with very good examples in the lecture so you can again if you are forgetting it please go back and revise all right and then the last question for this part is pangolins now pangolins since 2019 end have been in news a lot because of illegal wildlife trade because of the wet markets etc in cases like for example in china etc right so number one question total of five pangolin species are present across asian africa note it is eight otherwise for other you know species i would have not asked to remember but then pangolin is very important so please do that although in 2020 upsc did ask you a question on pangolins on hedgehogs etc i hope you remember that right then indian pangolin is critically endangered no it is the chinese pangolin which is critically endangered okay and out of the eight species which are found in asian africa india houses two one is indian pangolin the other is chinese it is the chinese pangolin which is critically endangered right and then they are one of the most trafficked mammals of the world yes this is also absolutely correct that they are one of the most trafficked mammals of the world right so that again is uh, true we would read about them more when we at least discuss about the other aspects right so when we read about uh, like for example traffic okay or when we read about other areas that would at least help us understand these parts right so that uh, ends this part so what we did we do so far i'll just quickly see we saw asiatic cheetahs okay uh, then we saw uh, basically thallophytes angiosperms by the way this is slightly technical so it might take you maybe one or two readings to actually understand it right and then we saw that basically in the tropical in the nilgiris you have tropical rainforests that is one however the grasslands which grow in the uh, this region is the shola forests right so these shola forests are also there you have multiple species diversity etc in this region okay so the grassland was shola whereas the rainforest or the, like basically the forest is 
tropical rainforests here. So the answer for three was A. Then Sundarbans, we have seen in good detail, Boma capturing technique from Africa, which we have, you know, which you are using. You have dugong, which is the sea cow. Then you have invasive species. Then Indian Desert National Park. Some wildlife sanctuaries in the news. Project Hangul and the last question on pangolin, right? So I hope this lecture has been of use to you. If you want to get a very good edge in the topics of prelims, you can join prelims 2023 crash course at a very affordable price. The seats are ending very soon. Okay. So you make sure you get them either online or offline, whatever you prefer. All right. I will now meet you in lecture 4.2 when we cover the other remaining species, right? All the current affairs update. So till then, please keep revising. I'll see you shortly. Thank you.